great psalms of thanksgiving in the Bible is Psalm 100. I'd like to read it to you. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Throughout church history, Christians have been taking psalms, like Psalm 100, and putting them to music so that they can be sung in worship. One of the most famous of these psalms is this Psalm 100, which I just read. It was actually paraphrased into a hymn during the Reformation period, and it first appeared in the Anglo-Genevan Psalter of 1561. The paraphrase is attributed to the Scottish clergyman and Bible translator William Keith. Keith fled his homeland for Switzerland due to the persecutions of the Catholic Queen Mary in England, who went on a rampage against the Protestants. While he was in Switzerland, Keith helped translate the Geneva Bible into English. He also contributed 25 psalms to the Anglo-Geneva Psalter. And then he carried that new hymn book back to England after the restoration of Protestantism by Queen Elizabeth I. Keith's paraphrase of Psalm 100 is called All People That on Earth Do Dwell, otherwise the tune known as the Old Hundredth. Get it? (laughs) Pretty cool. The words are usually sung to the tune which we are maybe more familiar um, with as the doxology. We often sing it at meals and such. So I would like us now to sing that one we skipped, the um, paraphrase of Psalm 100 that is in your bulletin on page 8. Please join me.
the melody that Keith used for the old hundredth is one of the most famous Christian hymn tunes. It goes back to that Psalter of 1562. It was composed or adapted by the Frenchman Louis Bourgeois, <laughs> not positive, who was invited to come to Geneva when John Calvin returned there in 1541 for the second part of his pastorate. In 1545, he became the chief musician of Geneva. Calvin brought congregational singing back into the church and wanted to put an emphasis on singing God's word. He also wanted a psalter for use in worship. So in 1547, Louis was given the job of providing tunes for new metrical psalms. He was largely, largely responsible for that psalter. The tune that we sing to the old hundredth was included in that psalter, but originally put to the French version of a different psalm. It was William Keith who wed, wed this melody to his paraphrase of Psalm 100, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. He included it in his Anglo-Genevan Psalter, and the rest of the English world kind of picked it up from there. English-speaking world, sorry. So not only did the tune become known as the Old Hundredth, but it was sung by people of the English Reformation, including the Puritans and the Separatists, who believed in only singing psalms or psalm paraphrases in worship. In Colossians 3, verse 16, we are told, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Thank you, my friends. Amen.